Okay, let's call it leaving the water here, folks. If this is a uh, don't have to discipline this yeah. commission. And to start with, uh, call the note to call the roll to make sure everyone knows who's here. Start. Uh, our lawyers almost here. <laughs> President and County Court. Okay. So uh, let's start over here and then you don't call yourself. I'm Marie Westberg. I'm the ADA coordinator for Northampton. Benjamin Kalish from Forbes Library. Hi, James Winston, member. Judy Kimberly, member. City Councilor Mary Ann Lodge, Vice Chair. June Page Chair. And the Caicos member. I'm Jeremy Dubbs. I, this is my first time here. This is, uh, but I applied to be on the commission today, actually. Sam Pollock. I'm a resident of Northampton. Uh, Doug Riddick, Stride. Chris Plotis, member. Jim Nash, Ward, through the city council. Adeline Cornell, member. There's some extra agendas or um, minutes that maybe be passed in the Who's there at? I got an extra one. Oh, I'll share. Thank you. Why did everybody say we got a good car today? Even though it's snowing. <laughs> okay. okay, first item on the agenda is, your, is approval of the December 18th. Um, 2019 minutes. The chair will accept a, a, a revision of that formal statement. What is it say? They they were actually January 15th. 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 So the minutes have been printed on January 15th. 2019. 2019. We made that. 2019. I think Letitia's name is spelled wrong in the first approval of minutes section. How's, how's Letitia spelled? I believe it's the way it's spelled above or under members president. Uh, L-E-T-I-S-H-A. Do we list the ADA coordinator as a member or separately as ADA coordinator? Separately. So that needs to be met with all the stuff that's here. Public comment? That's what we're starting with. Public comment? We have some public comment here. Yes, we'll Thank you, Jim. Um, my name is Jim Nash. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor and a former member of this committee for almost a decade. I, 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 I have very fond memory, memories of serving on this committee, uh, doing the barbecues, right, Marianne? And, um, and, um, and we got a lot of really good things done. Um, so uh, I'm here today um, before you, and this is, first of all, I want to be clear, this is public comment, and I'm sharing with you uh, something that is before uh, the Transportation and Parking Commission, which usually meets at this time. But um, due to some it's circumstances, it didn't meet today, so I'm actually allowed to be here. Uh, so uh, this is an ordinance for a handicapped parking space on Pleasant Street in front of Millennium Liquors. And you can see a diagram here of the current um, ordinance to, uh, and the propo proposed handicapped parking spot in front of Millennium Liquors. What number of Pleasant Street is that? Do you know? 
Can you try to picture where it is on part of this? It's right next to Roberta's. Oh, okay. Yes. Right, exactly. exactly. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. And, um, and also, in these photographs, you don't see the new improvements with the raised crosswalks and things like that. Um, anyway, in meeting with Roberto's and the owner of the, the, the package store, they are requesting that the handicapped space not be at the location in front of the liquor store, but actually be on the other side of the intersection of uh, next to Roberto's. The, the reason and um, the reason being that for the liquor store, this is the one parking space that's directly in front of the, the liquor store. There's another uh, parking space that doesn't not doesn't show up here uh, that's probably another 50 feet up the street. And so for this particular business, which is kind of high turnover, a lot of people walking in, uh, that this would be an inconvenient inconvenience for them. Um, however, both business owners are fine with the idea of this parking space being right next to Roberto's. What actually triggered this was, as you can see on this map, that there's parking um, right at Roberto's. There's, uh, there's actually, it looks like three spaces on here. One of those spaces was a handicapped parking space but that was on private property. But the city got credit for the handicapped parking space being at that location. When Roberto's expanded their patio, that parking space went away and thus became, thus there was the, the need to create a handicapped parking space at this location. The DPW um, has, uh, has been recommending that the parking space not be by Roberto's because Presently, there is a raised crosswalk, and so for somebody in a wheelchair, if they're if they're um, disembarking from the street side, they would need to go up the uh, raised crosswalk to get to the sidewalk. My argument is, well, yeah, there's a slope there. I've measured it. It's about a one degree slope. The the curb cut in front of the liquor store at points is actually up to a five degree slope. And that I, my argument is, well, it seems like the slope on the, you know, the race crosswalk is actually more accessible. Anyway, the uh, DPW does not recommend putting handicapped parking spaces by race crosswalks. And so in the back and forth with the DPW director, we came to the, uh, the agreement that let's turn it over to the Commission on Disabilities, ask them what they think, and whatever judgment you people render, we're fine with that. Um, the DPW is, is not completely locked in, uh, but um, it's, it's in terms of you, you people are going to have much more expertise around this, and so we, I'm hoping to have this on your agenda for next month's meeting where you can discuss it while I'm at another meeting up the street, but not able here to, per, to be here and present. Uh -huh. and, um, and in the meantime, if you want to send me any feedback via email, I, I, uh, I welcome that. And so that's what I have to say. We can't do any interaction because it's not on the agenda. And um, thanks for listening to me. Question, Councilor. We can't make our next meeting. I can't because I, I, I will be at the TPC. So I wanted to make my brief presentation today. And um, so, yes, yeah. I think we certainly arrange to, to visit the site, take a look at the. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I would be really interested in anybody Whether who, those slopes have who any uses a, a wheelchair to. Yeah. So, thank you. So, Councilor, this is currently a site that will be changed to an HP project. Well, one of the, it's currently the, the proposal, um, the ordinance right now, is to put it in front of the liquor store. But I, it's now back on the CPC to explore whether or not it, it can be moved. And not, and, and, um, and not be an obstacle for people. Yeah. Yeah. Are there disadvantages to the alternative location? 
Right. And if there are, let us know. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there another public comment? Uh, comment. Oh, you don't have an agenda? Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> you want me to say something? I don't know. Bring something up. I think, uh, Jeremy. You both. Thank you. Jeremy. Hi. Um, so I, I'm Jeremy. I've been a member of, a uh, resident of Northampton for 15 years. I uh, moved here from Pennsylvania uh, with my band of musician, and um, I've never gotten involved in, in uh, this sort of thing before. <clears throat> I've always had opinions of, about, you know, things in town, and, Accessibility issues, but have never gotten involved to change anything before. <clears throat> but um, this year, I've just been noticing, uh, like the, especially this winter, how bad the sidewalks have been, and uh, gotten to know the policies more. <clears throat> and the law about the law which states that uh, businesses are required to to uh, shovel their own sidewalks, but they're, they, if they don't do it, uh, the only way to enforce that law is to report them. <clears throat> so that requires people in wheelchairs to go out of the house, uh, potentially risk their lives having to go in the street because some of the sidewalks are not usable. <clears throat> and so we have to actually go out, maybe take a photo and then make a police report. Go online, fill out a form at, on the mayor's website, you can do that. But you have to go through this process. And I had to wait four days to hear back from the police. By the time they went to these locations, the, the snow was melted or already shoveled. So therefore, there was no consequences for the businesses. Uh, and uh, I'm happy that they're here now, but on those days that I couldn't get around, the process that's, if the system that's in place right now didn't help me because I had to wait four days. And uh, so my suggestion is that we do something about that law and uh, make it so, like, I, I agree that businesses should be required to do this, but there has to be some kind of enforcement. There has to be somebody, at least one person that goes out there, not a person in a wheelchair, that goes out there and says he, that that business is not shoveled. Because I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, and I was just going to add, not only businesses, but also residential. Also residential, Streets exactly. Streets, a real problem. Oh, Neighbor, oh, you know, oh, yeah. people that are 100%. away for a week and they don't have Yep. Anything in place for when they're away. Just, coming to, this, right. just yeah. coming to this meeting, I had to, uh, not for the entire way, but for part of the way here, I had to go on the street, on, oh, Con, yeah. on Con Street, because there was uh, ice on the sidewalks. And, and I understand that it's uh, you know, not an easy process to shovel it to get rid of ice. But just, I just feel like there needs to be somebody uh, besides a handicapped person that uh, looks at this. Correct, because there are laws in the book, it's the enforcement. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and actually the fall through, unfortunately, I think the and priorities, you know, yeah. for whatever reason, it isn't ranked as high as it should be. I agree with yeah. you uh, 100%. And one, one other thing that I think um, that could make this convincing to be brought up to the mayor or whoever we need to bring it up to, is that the city of Northampton could actually be sued if, yeah, there, if, if there was an injury or a uh, death because of this, uh, if they were, because because um, if they're not enforcing that law, that's actually not in compliance with ADA law, because you have to enforce them. Otherwise, you, you could be sued. So, if the tent doesn't want to get sued, we should fix the law, basically. And and there's uh, snow on on my street. I live in Northampton too. On Pleasant Street, it's like all piled up. Some sometimes people don't struggle on that on that. But you know when the bus stop is on on Pleasant on that on Pleasant Street, there's like snow still like on top piled up on 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 Pleasant. You you know what I'm talking about, but but Jim on 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 my street. You don't want to build Yeah. Many places. Many places. Many places. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be interesting if well while the people who give tickets were going around looking at the parking spaces, they were also looking yeah, at exactly. The yeah, that's, right. that's, that's so that's lovely, good. not that complicated the way you put it, you know. And then yeah. And then have the, you know could buy the ticket for the yeah. business. Well, it's the I, I would like that 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 yeah. 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 Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, awesome I'll have too. a specific proposal when we get to the review of the, the meeting with the mayor today because 
Right. And I, I brought the article that was in the newspaper. I yeah. also brought our, our other guests who um, basically solicited uh, comments and, and a very interesting discussion that, that took place. Let me. Yeah, because that was really nice. They came to my house and took, went outside with me and took photos and then up on the front page uh, a few Fridays ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, way back, we do have an ordinance, which you know, and it was due because of a resident living at St. Michael's house. And Bobby could not at all ask us from St. Michael's in front of the State Street Food Store. No shoveling, absolutely nothing. Yeah. And you probably know Bobby, he has to walk with crutches, which are a certain way, yeah. and his feet ask us out and he could not ask us for four days out of that house. That's why that ordinance was put in place by me, Bobby, and Council of Village White, and we worked tirelessly on that. And we have even residents on my ward, okay, off the Ryan Road area and that. They're much better now because we are enforcing. People are calling the police, giving the address of the houses and going up there and telling them, Oh yeah, I totally agree that it is work. It, it does work in co op ways. I just think that it could be there could be other ways to make it work better. Right. Yeah. Plus the fact is I agree with what I heard about people going away. That's a big problem. Could I suggest we continue right. to have the comments from the, our visitors and then we can talk about solutions this, and recommendations. This, this, this coming up for the agenda. Okay, cool. Is there, is, is there another comment? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Stan Pollock. I live in Florence. And uh, after I saw the article on the front page with Jeremy and comments uh, by Chris, um, I got on the local, I guess it's a listserv, it's called uh, Next Door Downtown Florence. Uh, you might be familiar with it. It's, uh, it's a site where people can put comments and uh, etc. Um, so I, I just said uh, impassable sidewalk alert. If you notice snow ice covered in a sidewalk or one that has not been cleared to the full width and length of the sidewalk, please contact the property owner that it needs to be done properly to accommodate walkers, baby strollers, and wheelchairs if the property owner does not respond and take appropriate action to resolve this issue, please contact the police non-emergency number 587-1100. So I got, uh, I think altogether, almost 30 responses from people, um, responses to my post um, some people saying, yeah, I totally agree. Some people saying, yeah, well, um, uh, there should be some mechanism citywide. Um, they mentioned Hatfield, which is quite a bit smaller, has less streets, that they actually clean the sidewalks, the city does. Uh, so that was mentioned. Um, uh, someone uh, mentioned about the plow trucks going really fast and I commented on that. Um, I've got 200, I live on a corner, so I've got 200 feet of sidewalk and then I also do my neighbors. Um, she's not able to get out and do it so I just continue on down the block there and this not this storm, but the one before last week or whenever it was, I had to do it three times. The, and I've talked to DPW and said, could you get your plow trucks to just slow down a little bit? Because when they're going 35, 40 miles an hour down the street with a big plow, it just sends a whole wave of ice and sand and salt and snow and fills up yep. the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And so then I have to get out with my snowblower and shovel again and do it over again. Um, uh, I've got a neighbor uh, who 
just never fully clears his sidewalk and sometimes I go down with my snow blower and you know so that I'm at, able to walk along there um, and so one year may have been last year or the year before I contacted the police and after a while they sent somebody out and I happened to be there while the patrol car was going back and forth and had my police scanner so I was listening to what he was saying and just rode by and said looks okay to me and <laughs> it was impassable it's exactly the, uh, exactly what that would happen when i heard yeah. from the police they all said it looked passable to them yeah Stan, were they using the wing clock oh somebody somebody mentioned that did you read these comments no. because we complained about the wing clock Wind is oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I didn't hear you correctly. Okay. A lot of my residents have complained about that wind cloud. Yeah, you I'm not see that you. out in like West Hampton and places like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody was talking about a, a non um, a non electric or non gasoline powered thing. Um, uh, uh, a Wovel, W O V E L. They're on a small street on Northern Avenue. Uh, people pitched in and they help each other. Um, so uh, that's basically my comment that this has been an ongoing thing. I have contacted the DPW over the years. I've lived there for almost 20 years. And you know, it's an ongoing thing and it's frustrating for people. Um, like I get out early and take care of it but there's people who can't, you know, get out because of age or whatever. Uh, and um, it's very frustrating for them to actually get somebody to clear it and then it's filled up again. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, any, any, well, anyone have a comment? I just want to say, very helpful to have this. It's been raised dramatically. Um, this kind of, uh, you know, effective press coverage is really helpful. And, and obviously, you got a significant kind of response. And you know, now looking for solutions, and that we can um, we can continue to discuss later in the meeting when we talk about the update of our self-evaluation, because this is something we could. Uh, add a targeted recommendation to those who have already formulated. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move to our uh, agenda items. We're going to talk to Paul Flabber. Hi, I'm Benjamin Kalish. I'm from Forbes Library. Um, there are two things I wish to bring to your attention. The big agenda item. Um, is the um, assistive technology fair, which doesn't exist yet. We're trying to make it happen. Um, so the Chicopee Public Library used to host an assistive technology fair. Um, the last one they did was several years ago. Um, they did, I think, five of them. Um, but they would be an event in a big hall-like space where um, vendors would have tables and could present, but then also throughout the day people would do presentations on various um, assistive technologies. So this is both something for someone who might um, be interested in using these or know someone who could use these assistive technologies to learn more, find out about new possibilities, but also a general awareness thing. And very much we um, want to, as much as possible, get anyone who is working with the public um, to, to be more aware of what's out there. Um, so we are looking at doing this next fall, um, possibly here, possibly at one of the public schools we're looking into spaces. Um, so I hope that this is something that some people here will be excited about. Um, and at this point, um, I'm going to put out um, a call for if you know of a vendor we should get in touch with, get in touch with me and I'll leave some of my business cards here. Um, 
Can I can I keep mm -hmm. your business card? Absolutely. Then I'll bring it to someone that that might work so I I'll bring I'll bring it. Yeah, so so looking for <coughs> vendors um, that we might ask to table, but then also for presentations. Um, I, I looked at how they did it in Chicky, and I, what they did, which I think makes a lot of sense, is that the vendors tabled only, and then other people with expertise who weren't there to sell something did the teaching. Um, so that the teaching doesn't just become selling a product. Um, so also, if you would be interested in presenting or teaching, have a workshop or know someone to be in touch with for that. Um, please let us know. And of course, if you have any ideas. And I can have yes. some ideas. And I'd like your card, please. Yes. Your card. Can I have your card, Jim? Chris, you want this back. Chris, you want this back. I'll get a hold of you. We're going to have this in Thank you. We are we are excited about it. We think it would be a really I think great it's a, thing. It's a very exciting idea. And among the potential linkages, um, there's now a coordinated organization in the state that's working on recycling of durable medical equipment. And um, I think it's going to be uh, about a, a, a once a year uh, collection data in Western mm -hmm. Mass. We can check with that. But if we could actually link with that and encourage, you know, both looking at technologies and potential purchase, but also the recycling dimension would be, that would be very possible. Yes. Um, I had one other thing, which is about an event um, next month. Should I go straight on to that? Yeah. Okay. Um, we are um, doing a film at the library called Going Blind. Um, we're going to be screening it twice. Um, it's a film about vision loss and living with vision loss, but also prevention and treatment of various vision um, issues. Um, and we are going to be screening it once as part of our ongoing series on accessibility issues, which is um, every second Friday. Um, in the afternoon, we have that. And we were really, really pleased that um, there is a social justice film series, a resistance film series, put on by the Resistance um, Center and the Northampton Committee to Stop the War. I think I said that right. Um, and they have also expressed interest in this film, so they will be doing a second screening, which will be during their regular slot um, in an evening. So that's going to be Friday, March 8th at 1 p.m. Um, and then Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m. is the one as part of the Resistance film series. Um, and I have flyers which I will leave here, but the real reason I'm bringing this up here at this meeting, besides just spreading the word, is because they are going to do a panel talking about accessibility as a social justice issue um, after the um, screening on that Wednesday night, March 27th. Um, and I have the contact information for someone involved in that series, Carol Lynn Oppenheim here. Um, and if you would be interested in speaking, um, she would be um, very interested to hear from you. She has some people lined up already, but was hoping to get more people. What's her name? Um, Carol Lynn Oppenheim. Oh, okay. And um, should I pass these around? Is that the best way of doing this? start those around. Mary, why do I want one? Come in, honey. Cool. Thank you. I hope I bring it in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, kudos to the library for the amount of activity you have moving there, and, and, yeah. and it really is a hot spot in the Jim, do you want to Oh, I'm good. Thank you.
That's all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, these, I'm hoping some of them will just stay at the senior center, but yeah. anyone who wants one, there are a lot of them. So. What is it? Uh, this is just advertising the, the, oh, the Um, well, Ben can email me the information if anyone else wants to. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda is to hear from the Human Rights Commission. So I don't think they are coming. Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> I, they said they were coming, but yeah, mm -hmm. we tried. Yeah. What we can extend their invitation for next time. So. Mm -hmm. We could extend their invitation. We're sort of busy today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next uh, we want to hear from is uh, update our discussion with the mayor on accessibility, self evaluation, and transition plan. I think that's true. Really yes. Um, since we have uh, a number of visitors who don't have the background on this, very quickly, the Commission for more than a year now has been, been working on looking at the updating and strengthening of the uh, uh, ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. Um, this discussion, uh, when it began, we knew right from the start in discussions with the mayor that one of the absolute keys uh, is to make the position of the ADA coordinator workable. Um, it is not workable as an add-on to what's a more than full-time responsibility. Um, we've had this discussion previously uh, with the mayor, but in the meantime, um, we've done some extensive um, data collection and formulated um, a broader series of recommendations. I, in, in our current draft, I think we have um, 11 substantial recommendations, but the first is the evaluation of the ADA coordinator's position. Uh, the mayor was not at all surprised with the substance of the recommendations that, we're, um, that we have submitted. He's heard most of the issues described previously. They have to do with the deteriorated pedestrian environment and um, in dealing with that. I, I want to say that I think we can add a recommendation that specifically addresses the concerns around snow removal and this specifically and, and um, can readily do that and, and create that as a, I think it would be our 12th recommendation um, to do that. Um, we are addressing effective communication concerns that um, in this community, which has a very substantial deaf and, and hard of hearing um, communities that um, we need to not only um, be looking at the need for sign language interpretation services on a more regular basis, but also the use of assistive listening system. Um, and the recommendations go on with specifics such as in particular, the need to have accessible toilet rooms uh, when city council meets. Absolutely an essential part of the democratic process uh, in this community at this point in time for anybody who needs to use a restroom in the course of what can be very extended uh, meetings. There is not. Um, all of that will be formulated in this draft plan, which we are um, getting close to a point where we're going to be able to present it publicly. The mayor's suggestion was, number one, the cycle um, is now underway to consider the needs for additional staffing. He sees this as a real need. The question will be um, how to structure a potential partnership with another community for a full-time coordinator, um, East Hampton being a, a community to consider or the potential of a part-time position, but one that is um, you know, valued at a professional level 
and in which the city makes a sufficient investment that we're going to be able to bring in a person who has specific disability knowledge and skills. Uh, the mayor is on board with that. Uh, suggested that what we need to do is to bring our, our draft plan to a, a, a point where we're ready to go out and do some public hearings that we get significant public input to help us refine and wait and identify any areas we may have, have missed in this draft. Um, this would then evolve as the, the plan, which would be the responsibility of an ADA coordinator to be hired to execute uh, over time. So I thought it was very, very positive, um, really the fruition of the conversations that, that began a, a couple of years ago. One of the things on timing, as we all understood, um, that um, Linda's departure as the director of uh, um, services here um, meant our shift to a third ADA coordinator and I think uh, three years time, which was problematic. And essentially, I think we are now getting on cycle with the process now being considered for this next budget cycle to, to really look at, at identifying um, how we would structure this position and then what the cost would be. So that we um, are, are looking at, you know, moving towards some uh, public hearings uh, on this. There is some refinement on this draft to be done, as I said, to uh, put in an additional recommendation and to um, also put together the some of the appendices which um, which basically have document and support the recommendations here. Thank you, Chris. So it was a it was a positive meeting. That's very positive it news. Is. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Nash, oh, you probably don't know mine. And you know how even with Pat Shaughnessy when she was the ADA coordinator, the difficulties it was for her even taking the control as a director of the senior center and then taking the full responsibility for so many years as being an ADA coordinator. It's a lot of work, a big responsibility, and they have the bigger responsibility of making sure that they are allocating money to keep this business going here, and that's your senior center. So you're asking a director to do another job that is very big and it's just too much and we are going in the right direction and I have a whole layout and I want to go in and see the mayor too and talk with him because many other cities use planning department they use the fire department right down the line but they don't have time to do that our planning department doesn't but East Stanton does it's a smaller town city right? so we have nothing to do but start researching which way are we going to go here. Are we going to go to East Stanton and combine with them or go out further? Or are we going to, again, find money, okay, to hire somebody? Well, I'm glad we're asking these questions. And I just looked through that um, briefly, and it, it's pretty comprehensive, and it I is. think it's great, and I like the idea of adding the, the evaluation of the, the aspect of clearing snow from the sidewalks is particularly for people with disabilities it's a huge job every year yeah, yeah I yeah okay. keeping access routes open and clear uh, we had talked about the issues during summer which is principally uh, vehicle blocking um, the really big one is how to deal with the wind so. Stan, do you remember way back, I was born and raised in the city, they used to go around and do the sidewalks. They had machinery, they had covers over it, and they would go along and do the sidewalks. Yes. Yes. That would be amazing. How come they don't do that anymore? Because money-wise, everything is the money. Oh, that's true. I'd like you to talk to the mayor and say, hey, can you please help us out so people don't fall on the bus? And what's really essential, and almost yes. all of them are blocked, are the curb cuts. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the ramps that we go through the sidewalks, really you'll, see, you'll be able to see that the sidewalk is plowed fine, but I can't actually get up onto it. Right. So what's the yeah. point? Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. like uh, where the bus stop uh, online, 
It's pretty bad. Um, like, like, we gotta move on. But I, I think this says something about our city and acknowledging that this exactly. is, you know, we are talking about social justice. This right. is, we are trying to give everybody the same opportunities. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We're trying to give everybody, people who are disabled, have a good quality of life. And they deserve that. I agree. So, we, we move forward. Um, I, I think what we're looking at is to uh, be prepared to have those public uh, uh, hearings in, in the spring, and that uh, one should be targeted specifically for the deaf community in the city, that we know we have a very substantial disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement of our, our significant number of deaf people in the, in the city because the communications, uh, technology, and services have been readily available. So. Here we go. Chris, someday I hope that there is a law with private clubs for people with disabilities. And I'm talking about hearing, the technology of hearing, and also people who are blind. And it's not happening, and I've talked with you about that before. So hopefully, someday, that will come true. That we get into these private clubs and be able to let people be able to join them and be able to hear or whatever. At, at the movie theater, they don't, they, uh, one of my good friends had an issue at the movie theater because she couldn't see. They had a terrible, uh, she had a terrible because they get rid of the wrong headphones because she can't see like in the, mo in the movie theater and stuff like that. So she had a bad, bad, she had a bad experience at, at, at the movie theater. Hmm. And Councilor Nash, I'd like to go over to Bible Burgos with you on a site visit. Sure, yeah, I, I'd appreciate that. That I'll would be you. terrific. I have to run. I actually was going to leave earlier, but I, I, I loved everything. Too. I was like, i got to stick around. You know, <laughs> Transportation and Parking Commission, and we're talking about accessibility. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad you were here. So thank you. Appreciate your thank service. you. Appreciate you very much. That's why I'm on the agenda. There's a... The film Great Fight for Disability Rights, short version in schools. I was wondering if we have information on where that's going to be. Right. The superintendent would request it possibly. Have you heard anything from the superintendent of them coming to our commission? Um, so I think we're not, he's not able to come at this time from, because of the other the budget and so forth. But they are. <coughs> They were um, open to the idea of showing the film in the school, in the schools, in the plural. Um, but if you want me to um, see if you can send someone else, I did suggest that as well. Right, because the or mayor is we... chair of school committee. All right, but we do have other school committee members that could be invited to come to listen or whatever chris whatever we need help on this i, I think their meeting is during our meeting so there is a meeting that happens during this time that that prohibited them from coming because school committee meeting is on the second thursday or first or third second or they're the third fourth and yeah, we're the third all right, well, um, I can, I can, I think I just need to tell them exactly what it is we want to propose about showing the film, because I think they are open to showing the film in the schools, but I wasn't sure if there was more to it than that. Did Chris, I think possibly we wanted to make it where this would happen. Would it be a curriculum for them to be able to have that there? Yeah. I it would be useful to have a discussion with the whoever is the uh, curriculum director. Um, if it isn't convenient to meet here at this time, could we have representative or representatives of the commission meet with them? I always find this meeting format is a very cumbersome way to try to move specific tasks. Um, as I understand the bylaws of the commission, a subcommittee can be identified by the by the chair 
um, to carry out a particular task. So if that would facilitate the communication, you know, rather than being constrained by this time slot to actually go there, it's a fairly simple, straightforward proposition. Have they seen the materials? Can they review it? How would they use an awareness piece like that? What are the options? And then it's mostly just kind of sparking and focusing the attention. Did the superintendent say when he could be available? So he did say they had shown the film in the schools. He didn't say when, like how often, or if they do it every year, or. But I don't think he's available to come. And you know, sometimes people are just so busy they don't. Could I ask you to identify, ask them, who's yeah. the right person for us to meet with? Okay. And who, you know, one or two representatives. Okay. I'm going to set up a meeting outside of the city. I think that will be much more productive. Let's move government. Um, okay. Chris, how about I just talk with Jean? You and I and Jean go. That'd be fine. So, so, as soon as we know who we go to. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Um, I want uh, one bit of information. You know, we very regularly bring up um, um, issues that have been, been brought around waiver requests or other business before the Mass Architectural Access Board. A uh, very fine public servant, uh, Tom Hopkins, a longtime director of the Access Board, uh, died rather suddenly. So, that entity. I, I think he'd been director for a couple of decades. Um, and uh, I, I had to say, you know, it's only when you lose somebody. I, I was thinking over uh, the many, many, uh, you know, projects I, I saw him, you know, carry over the years. He did a tremendous amount of work to uh, really promote accessibility in the uh, Do we have any new business? We're, we're finished with old business now. Do we have any new business before us? But we also no, want to read yeah. yeah. Diandra again. We have some more. We need to recognize one by one. Who worked with us and who worked with uh, the ADA coordinator in putting together the, uh, the self evaluation and transition plan? I'm currently looking for employment and I applied to grad school, so one or the other. <laughs> But it, it's, um, I was good hearing about what's going on and that you guys have had some headway on the self-evaluation in the city. And it's it's saddening to see that a lot of that still hasn't changed with the sidewalk because it felt like the same discussion that we were talking about a year and a half ago with like the um, snow and like, um, I remember one of the times I was coming to the senior center and there was someone who was pushed out of the, who was uh, essentially riding in the sidewalk, um, on the street, with a truck behind him, because the, um, the sidewalks are so bad. That's like every day for me when it went snowy out there. Yeah, so it sucks that that hasn't nothing has been fixed, but hopefully after the self evaluation is completed, the city will make some more effort to do something to combat that. I just hate to say, this has not only been a year and a half. This has been going on for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, for the decades. <laughs> it's all going. Yeah. yeah, we're asking Northampton to do something that some larger communities have done, which is to really you know, create a position as a staff position. Uh, uh, Worcester, Springfield, uh, Boston, Cambridge, uh, Cambridge, Cambridge. Somerville uh, in the past, they're all bigger communities. So we're saying, you know, this has to be concentrated and work out a model. And no doubt we'll have debates with the mayor about, you know, the amount of resources to be allocated. 
but at least we know and are in agreement about the direction that we need to move mm -hmm. in. This cannot be done and, and left to the commission to be um, trying to fill the gaps that really have to be carried by a responsible public administrator. Everybody that I've spoken to, about, like all my friends, and everybody that I've brought this up with, they all agree with what we're saying. Everybody sees what's happening and they keep it. And they all think that a change needs to happen. Everybody that I've talked to. Them. With the, another thing that came up was the possibility, since there are movements towards strengthening some volunteerism with, for example, neighbors. Um, again, with, with somebody you know, carrying this task and working out one, strengthening enforcement for them and so that there are more um, effective means of reporting and pushing people who have the capacity to fulfill their responsibility. And for those who really don't have the, the resources for one reason or another, see if we can do some, some linkage to the volunteer networks. Exactly, yeah. I would just like to add that um, we need to educate homeowners and business owners on a regular basis, you know, because we have turnover of people. Um, there's a, I don't know how many people are reached with the robocall uh, that uh, Northampton has declared a snow emergency. In that little blurb, they can say, Remember, you are responsible to clear your yeah. sidewalk. But they are doing they do, that. They are doing they that. Are doing they are doing that. Okay. Yes. They are doing that. They are doing that. In the yes, uh, recording? Yes. Yes. I right. told Donna about it, and Marie knew about and it. I heard it. And they are recording. Okay. But I guess I'm guilty of not listening to the whole thing. <laughs> yes, they're doing it. But that's just um, it. <laughs> and, you know, there can be a little postcard sent out, you know, you're a homeowner, this is what... Your, your business it could owner. be attached to the census sheet. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. If there's no if there's no further business, then uh, I'll declare the meeting adjourned. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Second.